still the, the same virus in, in many essences, right? So it's still SARS coronavirus 2. Um, it's changed a little bit, but really the, the properties as far as infection prevention control still play a, a massive part in, in our being able to curb transmission. So, you know, the, the mutations are certainly concerning uh, that the virus has been able to, you know, kind of, um, you know, in some ways maybe adapt to, to humans because this is really the, you know, the first 12 months it's, it's been in humans and circulating widely. Um, it's kind of stretching its legs to figure out what works and what doesn't right now. Um, and that means that we're seeing that some of these adaptations and these mutations lead to, to enhanced transmissibility. But at the end of the day, th this is not a, a variant that can now you know, permeate walls and go through glass um, and, you know, suddenly, you know, make it through uh, masks and, and all those things. So well, we have to be cognizant of that. And when we think about the variants, all the infection prevention control measures that we've been using so far, and, and we certainly have all grown tired of hearing about, um, they still apply. They are far more pertinent um, because of that fact that the virus is able to, or this variant is able to transmit wider. Um, but we know that if we're adherent to infection prevention control measures, that, that certainly, uh, that will help us. Right now, the virus is, you know, kind of moving through humans and moving through uh, really a new species that hasn't done uh, so in the past. So this is a time period where you know, it, it's also somewhat adjusting to us. Um, it has most of the machinery in place to be able to and, you know, obviously uh, transmit, cause disease, but it's still kind of you know, picking up some things and, and you know, and kind of getting some some added value uh, with, with going through mutations and moving through people. So what we're seeing right now um, are mutations that seem to kind of give a better key to fit within the lock of our cells. Okay, so we think about this idea of, you know, if we're, if we're trying to, you know, put a key into a door, um, you know, if, if we make some minor changes, maybe that key fits into the lock a little bit more smoothly, and maybe it's able to unlock that, that mechanism a, a little bit easier as well. So we think right now what it looks like in these are some of these mutations are related to allowing basically that virus to come in and bind to our cells stronger. But from an individual standpoint, you know, this, this goes back, and it, it kind of keeps saying it over and over again, but it's about rethinking our strategies, what we're doing uh, in terms of our own protection and our own infection prevention control. So, you know, am I wearing a mask 90% of the time or am I wearing it 100% of the time? Um, you know, when I'm wearing that mask, am I wearing it properly? Um, what are the things that I'm doing that maybe reduce the effectiveness of that mask? Um, am I touching my face a lot? And, you know, have I gotten a little bit complacent? with hand hygiene, have I become maybe a little bit complacent with, uh, you know, not, you know, kind of congregating uh, or congregating in, in groups? Um, you know, who are the people that I've been interacting with and, and have those kind of relationships changed over time? I think the, this is the time for us to, to really look back at all those basic things and figure out, okay, yes, we're, we're doing the right things as individuals the majority of the time, but maybe here are the, you know, kind of the, the points in time when I'm not maybe, you know, kind of focusing as much as I should. You know, we see as far as recommendations from different uh, health regions across the globe, which is the, the triple layer masks are probably, you know, the best uh, that, that we can do right now in terms of kind of you know, broad, um, you know, uh, use for, uh, for the public and certainly availability for the public. Um, if somebody wants to use a second mask, certainly they can. Um, but I would always, again, kind of argue that we have to ensure that we're, you know, really wearing masks properly in the first place. So, you know, if we want to go to, to using a second mask, um, you know, we have to keep in mind, are, are we actually wearing, you know, that, that first mask properly in, in the first place? Um, because certainly I, I still see people um, that, uh, that are not wearing masks properly. So, you know, if you're going to move to a second mask and not actually you know, ensure that there's a tight seal and that you have that comfortable uh, ridge across the nose, um, and, and have the, the mask on your chin. Um, if you're not doing those things, the second mask is probably not going to, to do the trick. There may be an increased risk of, risk of death, but if we have a virus that purely has become more transmissible, um, we know that if that virus and if that variant starts to move to our population, it's going to result in more cases. And we know that if there are more cases, that's going to ultimately result in more people going to the hospital and likely more people succumbing to disease. 
regardless if it if it has a higher risk of um, you know of disease complications or, or disease severity. So we have to keep that really in mind that when we hear the word more transmissible, that should give us an indication that this is something we, we need to be very serious about.